Hello everybody and welcome back to the sound of drop. Let's just start where we left off. From the elevator landing, we need to head for the for the top floor of the separate Mountain East building. The elevator is the type that has a glass window so you can see out. That is the only thing that's distracting me from my gloom. A crowd of people get on with us, but almost all of them are gone by the time we reach the floor that contains the aquarium. They probably stopped off at the apparel or sundry shop. It isn't that we aren't interested, but Jimeno recommends it's crowded now, so let's come back when it's less busy. And that keeps us back, deciding to stick with the plans we made back at the coffee shop. Stepping onto our floor, the atmosphere immediately switches to a lively one. The sounds of chatter are drowned out by the roar of a large fan. The lighting is dim and tinted slightly blue. The windows are also covered, giving the feeling that it has suddenly become night. As this is an aquarium, it makes sense that the concept is based around the ocean. Yes, the pungent smell of salt is a major change. Amazing. It's like we've dived into the deep sea. That's what I thought too. Instead of being targeted at families, lately it seems more like a date spot for adults. Or at least that's what the magazine said, but it's true. Even though this is my second time coming here, it feels like the first time. Next to the entrance is the souvenir shop, though it lacks the usual boisterous voices. It appears to be a place that can be reached both from the inside and outside but it doesn't seem to get many customers. Just as Jimeno has said, the aquarium seems to target adults. In an atmosphere like that, even Jimeno looks nervous. Hey, Mayu. What's up? I forgot to tell you one important thing. Jimeno makes a mysterious face and brings her mouth up to my ear. What, did you drop your wallet or something? No, that's not it. This is something that I heard that's a bit of an urban legend, but they say the amount of people going missing is on the rise. There's a rumor that this month alone, the number missing is well into the double digits. Huh? We have this conversation in front of the metal rack that holds the map of the aquarium. Aside from the map, there is a guide to Montan East Building and information about affiliated hotels. During that time, we hear the sound of the elevator opening and closing, but do not see the people going into the aquarium. Mountain used to be a shopping district, right? That seems to be why, even if there were a lot of runaways, the media wouldn't pay much attention. But supposedly many of the missing persons had stopped off at Mountain Aquarium. That rumor, who did you hear it from? Who indeed? No one in particular. You know how rumors spread. At Jimeno's words, I feel a cold shiver along my spine. Regardless of how credible the rumor is, a sense of dread shoots through me. Considering my past, it's natural that I would feel connected to missing persons in my age range, especially if they are runaways. If that is the case, it would send chills along the back of my neck. Why on earth? You could have told me before this. Well, I thought if you heard about it, Maya, you might not have wanted to come. Oh, so you're forgetting to tell me it was a lie then, you little. I had intended to protest firmly, but it still ended rather anticlimactically. Ghosts may exist, and they still may be unable to come back, but that doesn't mean I'm interested in visiting places where they are. This is proof that Himeno has her own strange interest, yet it still makes me feel even more worried. This rumor has a continuation. Specifically, people who saw the deep sea fish booth never came home. Jimena relays those two pieces of information that frightened me with a smile. The rumor itself aside, she wanted to pass over the question of why people were able to see the closed off deep sea fish booth in the first place, not wanting to discuss it at all. Wait a minute, Jimeno. Something else is tied in between that fear. Something about the aquarium and the missing persons who didn't come home. That was essentially... Uh, are 
Are you okay, Mayu? Sorry, I guess I scared you a bit too much. I think this story is pretty exaggerated, so don't worry about it. I heard it's a fun aquarium. I think we should take those stories with a grain of salt, right? Though her kindness is misdirected, it's kindness just the same. Having voluntarily sat down, I take the hand Himeno extends to me. As I slowly rise to my feet, I respond, Yeah, you're right. To think that I would hear of a connection to my precious memory in a place like this. It's strange. After five years, the memory should have faded. I tell myself this, then let out a small sigh. Himeno is actually showing concern, so I sit down on a bench in the rest area next to the souvenir shop. Himeno even, bring, even brings me a can of cocoa. As I'm drinking it, she buys our tickets. With her doing all of this, I have to go with her. Are you okay, miss? The fact that I'm thinking thoughts like the canned cocoa is a little weak is proof that I'm cooling down. As I'm starting to feel better, a male voice calls out to me. While holding my half-finished cocoa, I turn in the direction the voice came from. Rather than the boy's voice I expect, it belonged to an adult, so I respond timidly. Um, I'm okay, so... <sighs> no need to be so vigilant. He's wearing a gray knit cap and a brown running shirt. He's tall, even for a guy, so I have to look up at him. His build is almost all muscle, and my shoulders shudder a bit in surprise. He appears well over the age of 20, so I can't think of a reason he would want to talk to us. Whether he realizes I'm looking up at him or not, he plunks down right next to me. Even after he sits down, we aren't sitting at the same height. Pretending to fix my posture, I move away from him a little. Are you not feeling well? Hmm. I think we should be honest. I'm not. I say as if he had fleshed it out of me. Actually, it was less my physical condition and more what was on my mind, but I was hesitant to explain that to a stranger from the get-go. Guess not. Your, fa your face looks really upset. You alright? Can you get back home? You mean to take you to the station? Um... The smile he gives me baffled me. The reason was because that smile seemed unnatural. I definitely had no recollection of him, and I've never had this much contact with a man who was not a relative. Ah, no need to worry. I work part-time in this building, so I'm familiar with Montan. Hey, what are you doing? Jimeno? I gasp and look up. Jimeno is there carrying two tickets and some pamphlets. With her hands on her hips and her cheeks puffed out, Jimeno glares at the man with narrowed eyes. I think the only ones allowed to hit on junior high schools would be high schoolers. No, I'm not trying to hit on anyone. This girl just looks unwell is all. Mayu, what happened? Uh, I don't think it was. He would think he's. I think he's being genuine. Was it hitting on someone? I turned to the man and tilt my head. Since Jimeno has come, I've relaxed a bit and can look him in the eyes. You were asking me that. So that was what you were doing. Jimeno says that in an exasperated voice in my place. She says. You're the worst, and grabs my arm, pulling me to her side. The man rests his elbows on his knees and shrugs. He punctuates the shrug with a sigh. Mayu, let's go. And hey, mister? Himeno mutters, facing the man's chest. On hearing her say mister and giving me a puzzled look, the man shows us the plastic name tag hanging from his neck. Ah, I must have forgotten to take this off. Himeno, speaking of which, he did say he worked part-time in this building. Ah, oh, then is that his entry card or something? He slaps his knees and rises to his feet. He probably played some kind of sport or something because the movement as he stands looks so effortless. I'm Hiyoshi Kenji. I work part-time at the shop downstairs. With this entry card, I can get a Montan Aquarium at a discount. Is it a company employee discount? Something like that. I'm not exactly a company employee, but I get in at half off anyway. So, I come here often. Really? That's quite unexpected for you, mister. When you become older, you'll crave these soothing experiences as well. And I'm not old enough to be a mister. Now he says it. 
Compared to us, you are definitely old enough to be a mister. Hiyoshi-san grimaces angrily, then sniffs in a self-depreciating manner. He appears to be a little older than a college student, so calling him old enough to be a mister is probably rude. But Himeno only said the impression he gave was pretty close. With the aquarium as a shared point of interest, Himeno's attitude towards Hiyoshi-san softens. As proof, Himeno talks with Hiyoshi-san about the shops in this building. I don't really know a lot about brands, so I sip my remaining cocoa and listen from the outside. My iced cocoa had become lukewarm cocoa. Well, mister, are you also well versed in urban legends? On hearing Himeno's question, my head pops up in surprise. The corners of Yoshi-san's mouth lift into a grin. Hmm, that's rather unexpected for you as well. So you're interested in such things? Of course I am. You're only young once, so you have to satisfy your curiosity. We're looking into the closed-down deep-sea fish booth. There's a rumor that it's open on the day of the full moon. You know anything about it? Hiyoshi-san places his hand on his chin and looks down, grunting loudly. He glances at me, looks over at the entrance, then finally turns to Himeno and opens his mouth. I think you need to give up on that one thing. Naturally, since I'm a regular here, I often hear rumors like there are spirits floating in the tanks, or every time a person dies, the jellyfish tank increases by one and so on. Himeno-chan, the story you mentioned shouldn't be anything more than one of those rumors, but... Stop dancing around it. Just tell me. Previously, I knew someone who went looking into this just as you girls are doing now, Himeno-chan. He went missing soon after. Missing? Without thinking about it, I joined their conversation. If someone has gone missing here at Mountain Aquarium, it holds significance for me as well. Is that for real? I glanced back in surprise. Himeno was still looking at him with doubt in her eyes. Yoshi-san listens to what Himeno said and with a playful smile responds, Just kidding, it's a lie. I wonder if it is a lie. Because of the words he muttered, my curiosity has been piqued. I couldn't imagine the tense face he made as he told the story of an acquaintance who went missing being faked. That's right, but if that's the case, then this really might interest you, Mayu. I have thought from the beginning that it would be better just to give up. No way. I already bought the tickets anyway. Himeno's face shows that she's enjoying herself to the end, and she takes my arm to gently pull me closer to her. This was the signal that she was ready to go, and in my mind, I prayed that nothing would happen. Well then, wanna walk around with me? Hiyoshi-san calls out to Himeno, who has said later, but it's me rather than Himeno who hears him, and spins around first, so I make eye contact with Hiyoshi-san and say, no way, I think we'll pass, so that's fine. Mm, more the merrier, we'll let him come. That's fine. Oh, surprising how quickly you got into a good mood. Hiyoshi-san snaps his fingers and rushes to our side. Out, out! As she says this, Himeno steps in front of me and makes a big X mark with both hands. Very Japanese. <laughs> Mayu, don't be tricked by an old guy like him. He uses kind words to get close to you, but he's thinking weird things inside his mind. Himeno-chan, that's not it at all. What do you mean by weird things, Himeno? Uh, well... Hiyoshi-san narrows his eyes and grins widely. He glosses over my question and asks, What, Himeno-chan? For some reason, Himeno's face grows red and she grabs me tightly by the wrist. Sexual harassment! Definitely sexual harassment, mister! Wow. Without giving Hiyoshi-san a second look, Himeno drags me to the gate. Hiyoshi-san smiles and shrugs his shoulder. The aquarium entrance is so dark that we can't see in front of us until we are inside. I can feel the cold air on my skin. I get a sensation of something heavy, causing me to rub my arm. Naturally, there is no mark indicating something attacked me, and, called back by Himeno's hey let's go, I pass my ticket through the machine. Meh, it figures that the whole, if you come on the day of a full moon, all the water will change into blood thing is a lie. The water's normal. Of course it is, jeez. 
Right away, Himeno says so regretfully. Even so, she's still unable to hold back her excitement at having some having come to the aquarium and her steps are fittingly light. As we come out of the gate, there are several small tanks nearby. Fontaine's Aquarium's first and most celebrated exhibit is the one displaying fish native to Tokyo Bay. There are four tanks in this corner, from left to right, each one showing the environments of the river flowing into Tokyo Bay. Brackish waters, shoals, and open water come one right after the other. Himeno giggles as rockfish, porgy, and other fish we recognize from the supermarket are also there. This booth also showcases environmental problems in order to prompt consciousness of the issue, causing a tightening in my chest. Water pollution is a serious problem. Tomorrow, I think I'll try asking mom to use a little less detergent. Hmm. Suddenly it gotten like this. Jimena's reaction is the polar opposite of mine. Even as I'm reading the panels, she's uninterested in the display. Just like that, I read every last panel. Jimena has long since stopped watching me, crossing her arms and puffing out her cheeks. Thanks for waiting, Jimena. Jeez, you're too serious, Mayu. If you act like that the whole time, the day will be over. Er, they'll close. It'll be fine. This area isn't that big. And it's not like I'm going to read everything. As soon as she hears what I said, an expression of dissatisfaction appears on Jimeno's face. Well, let's head to the next area. Next is the tunnel tank. There might be ghosts. Oh, maybe that will be with the human-like fish. Jeez, come on already. Oh man, are they talking about that one fish? Oh god. Even saying something like that, upon entering the aquarium, I had to begin to enjoy myself. Upon cheerfully calling out to Jimeno, my previous unease has disappeared, leaving me to leaving me ready to move forward with a light step. Ooh. Amazing. Really amazing and pretty. With no door to partition this booth and the next, passing beside this tank took us to the next one, where larger breeds of fish swim about. <laughs> this is no ordinary tank, but rather a giant tube-like tunnel, with the left and right sides connected above our heads in an arc. As we walk through the tunnel, we're able to watch the fish moving about in three dimensions. We bring our faces as close as we can to the glass, giving the illusion that we're in the ocean. Just watching the mantas, the rays, the various types of sharks, and the sea turtles can be intoxicating for us humans. When I was a child, I thought the ceiling might crack, but now I pass that feeling up, leaving only the throbbing of my heart. The water is a giant bundle of blue, various colors within it shooting every which way. Being able to see how big they are up, up close, separated by mere centimeters of glass, is so impressive it gives me the greatest realization of our shared existence. Here, Jimeno's pace slows and she takes her steps one by one. Hey Mayu, look at the, those huge fangs! Jimeno, that fish is cute too! Ah, uh, the stingray's face is creepy! Really? I think it's cute! Ah, a manta! It's huge! That little one over there looks yummy. Talking as the words come to us, our conversation seems out of sync. Our feelings of being touched, however, are the same, and Jimeno's enjoyment is obvious. Being surrounded by the water and the fish as we are, we feel as though we've freed from any sense of time. Mayu, doesn't this raised face look human? Maybe so. It does! It does. The mystery of the human face fish is solved. N naturally. Well, if you're okay with it, then so am I. Thus, we learn the true nature of one of the urban legends. I was fine either way, but for Jimeno, this was this way is probably best. Though, from Jimeno's enthusiastic stance, even as she watches the fish, she probably realizes just how implausible it all is. Rather than get tired of it, though. I'm having fun. We move leisurely through the tunnel, coming to a stop at the center. Up to this point, only the big things have caught our eyes, but on closer inspection of the tank, there's also sand piled up to our knees, 
with shrimp, shellfish, small fish, and other such creatures dwelling there. Compared to the manta ray, the small shrimp, which can't even be considered child size, seem so cute and innocent as they swim about, breaking through the sand. Hey, look, Jimeno! Ah, it's tiny! As I expected, Jimeno has followed the human face ray, and on seeing my fingertip, speaks in a playful tone. Upon sensing the tremors from Jimeno poking the glass, the ray kicks at the sand and flees deeper into the tank. And it's gone now. As I say this to Jimeno, I smile at a small shrimp. Jimeno does the same, smiling widely. Before long, the two of us are looking up at the ceiling, toying with the question of just how high it is. Even looking up, we can only see the fish swimming, never the ceiling itself. Looking up from the bottom of the sea, one would normally see the rays of the sun piercing the water. But looking up here, it was the opposite, with the bottom of the sea seeming to continue forever. It could have been the reflection of the light, or the ceiling really might have been too high. As I realized, I can't be sure, my eyes settle on a small but characteristically long-nosed shark swimming past. Ooh, a goblin shark. Sharks. Sharks. That's a ray, isn't it? You just saw it from behind earlier. As soon as I mutter that, Jimeno responds. It's true that although I'm interested in this type, Jimeno has fixated on the human-faced ray. Ooh. Huh? What's up? Himeno asks, but I falter. The conversation gives me a sense of what you might call deja vu. How strange. I feel as if I've had this conversation before. At that moment, my vision is dyed ultramarine. Who is that? Huh? It was no longer Jimeno in front of me, but someone else had that had caught my attention. This can't be real? Hey, Mayu! The ultramarine color unchanged, within it a face like mine passes before me. A face like mine from five years ago. Wearing an ultramarine overcoat that merges with the color of my vision, the girl turns to me and seems to be giving me a gentle smile. Mayu, wait! Mari. Hmm. Without hearing Jimeno calling me back, I start running. We haven't finished looking at everything in the tube tunnel tank, but there's something more important right in front of me. Long hair that looks almost transparent, a thick blue coat, cute boots with fur in them. There was no way I could forget that outfit. That's because it was the outfit my little sister, Nakanobe Mari, wore when she went missing here five years ago. The girl quickens her pace as if playing with me and disappears on the, uh, out the other side of the tunnel. There are hardly any people there, but I lose sight of her between the shadows of the tank and the corner. Mari, how? Why? Hey, Mayu, wait! Breathing heavily, Himeno? Himeko? Ha <laughs> ha! Himeno chases after me. I say sorry and break away from her, searching for the vision of Mari. As I come out of the tunnel, I survey the area, spawning a winter skirt nearby. I chase after that swaying form. Behind me, I can hear the intensity of Himeno's rushing steps and quicken my pace. Yeah. Having fallen into a trance, I realize what's going on when I slam into someone and fall on my backside. Oh. Huh. The girl clicks her tongue as she picks up what she had dropped. As I start to say excuse me to her, she's already moving past me and running off somewhere. Because of that brief incident, I'm unable to find my way out of my confusion. Anyway, Mari! I feel bad about the person I run into, causing me to feel flustered. In that exchange, I lose sight of both that long hair and that long skirt. But you're going this way, right? I'm not sure myself where I'm running to, but I think you can say I'm definitely running with all my heart. I pass between more tanks than I can remember, but I don't pay them one bit of attention. 
I just continue following Mari's back, running. Mari is just as bashful as she was the day she disappeared. Mayu, get a hold of yourself! Those few words end my chase. To be more accurate, it was ended by Jimeno herself, who had grabbed my wrist. Huh? You suddenly took off and you wouldn't turn around no matter how many times I called you. Even when you dropped something, you had no idea. What happened all of a sudden? Wait, Jimeno, if I can't go after Mari, I'll explain everything, so... Hold it. I look back at Jimeno upon hearing her extremely hurt voice. I see tears forming in Jimeno's eyes, and I turn my whole body to face her. I stand in silence like this for several seconds. If I tell Jimeno about Mari, I'm sure she will regret bringing me to Montan Aquarium. When she followed me, she had to have seen Mari. It's natural that she would have some misgivings about me chasing some total stranger since she doesn't know Mari. Even so, I'm not sure what to say. If I apologize now and play dumb, we can probably go back to playfully searching the aquarium for information. But that is not something I can do. It isn't the similarities that are the problem. Mari is here, and just as she had been on that day. There is no way I can go home without taking her with me. I... Mayu, tell me what's going on. Who is Mari? Why do you keep running off without saying anything? Tears are pouring out of Jimeno's eyes. I can't understand why she's so sad, but still, my little sister. My little sister, she was here. Little sister? See, the girl I was chasing, she's my little sister. Mari disappeared five years ago at this aquarium. Looking at Jimeno's tear-stained face, I no longer feel like hiding anything. Perhaps in the depths of my consciousness, I'm hoping Jimena will become satisfied and say she wants to look for Mari with me. I'll explain in more detail later. On top of that, when I look back once more, Jimena squeezes my hand and holds me back. This is the gentlest, but the strongest that she's held my hand. Jimena stares into my eyes, then tilts her head to the side. What do you mean? You were chasing someone? I told you, the little girl that was in front of me, wearing the ultramarine coat and the boots, remember? That was Mari, exactly how she looked long ago. Mari, you snap out of it. Jimeno shouts. It isn't simply a loud voice, but one way down with great sadness. It definitely gets through to me, but that doesn't mean it will stop me. Because without a doubt, I was right. Mari had been right before my eyes, so I had to chase... Let's just say that even if this Mari girl is here, she would have grown in five years and her clothes wouldn't be the same. It's summer, so she wouldn't be wearing a coat. Moreover, she was here. I saw her. No, Mayu, no. Mayu, you weren't chasing anyone. You just took off running, leaving me behind, okay? Could you just calm down for a bit? Our tickets will get us back in, so how about some cocoa in the rest area? I think you're tired since you were a little shaky before. Jimeno seemed pretty frantic, so I know she isn't lying just to persuade me. But there is no way that my seeing Mari there was a lie. That's why I start to speak without really knowing what I want to say. Jimeno, Mayu, okay? Wiping away her tears, Jimeno smiles at me. Surely she has plenty of strong feelings about this whole thing. I'm sure she has loads to say about me keeping the Mari thing, and my reason for resisting visiting Montan Aquarium quiet. Even so, it seems as though Jimeno has accepted me. She just smiles and lets it go. That's probably right. Surely if we're by the entrance, we'll know if Mari comes out. My dear, that's good. That's right. That's more like you. Let's go have some cocoa and you can tell me everything. As she smiles, Jimena once again takes my hand into her soft palm. Oh, that's right. You dropped this. You gotta be more careful. With a hand that isn't holding my own, she hands me something small. Oh. It's a keychain. The blue droplet shape is inlaid with stardust and also holds a starfish charm. It isn't exactly rare being a giveaway item. But why did Jimena have it? Only questions arise in my mind. Why, when that keychain was... On thinking about it, I, insti I instinctively shake off Jimeno's hand. 
Hey, what are you doing? After I picked it up for you and all. Jimeno's voice is like an arrow piercing through me. The pain in my chest is nothing more than discomfort. What is Jimeno saying? That isn't mine, so I can't possibly have dropped it. And now, I can't look at Jimeno's face. Liar. Huh? Liar? That's not mine. It isn't something I dropped. It, it was Mari's. Mari dropped it. That can't be. I'm not lying. Really, there was no Mari Jen. So she couldn't have dropped the keychain. His meadow was becoming gruff as she continued. Really, isn't it you who's lying? No one. No one else is here. That's enough, Himeno, you dummy. Ooh. <laughs> Saying only that, I turn my back on Himeno. When I glance back, Himeno's shocked expression is getting further away. She was there. Mari had definitely been there. Because the keychain Himeno had, it belonged to Mari. There was no way I could forget. It was just before Mari went missing. 